Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, it's great to meet you. And if you're returning, hey y'all. So, uh, Twin Flame Conversation for this week. Uh, this is for Twins in Separation. Um, welcome. I'm feeling like I need to welcome some people because there. I feel like there are a few of you that are um, connecting with me here on the channel that are pretty new to the journey. Um, so welcome, if <laughs> if you want to say it that way. Um, I know there are some of us that are chuckling along with it. It's like, yeah, well, get ready because this ain't no picnic. <laughs> but I don't want to scare anybody. Um, it's actually a really, really awesome experience. Um, it's one that um, that will teach you a lot about yourself and will help you learn and grow um, and into the best version of yourself than you possibly can be. And to be quite honest, that's really what this journey is about. Yes, we do have a mission here to, you know, help with the ascension process and be leaders and teachers and all that. But many of us get caught up in the whole dynamic of just wanting to, you know, reach union with our twins and often put our lives on hold um, in the effort to just wait to restart everything, wait to really, quote, live our lives when we're actually with our twin, and that's not what it's about. Um, yes, union with your twin, if you are truly a twin flame and it is part of your contract in this lifetime, union with, with your twin will come if it's destined to be. But it's not going to happen until you have reached a balance within yourself of both masculine and feminine energies, whether you identify with the divine masculine or the divine feminine individually, um, it's about balancing your masculine and feminine energies within um, and finding union within before that union can be manifest in your physical reality. Um, a, a key point to understand when it comes to manifestation, that which you hold on an energetic level within is that which will be reflected or manifested in your physical reality externally. So it is incredibly, imperatively important that you identify the things that are blocking you within before you can ever really hope to um, fix that in your external reality, yeah? Other things to talk about. Um, if you are resonating with me, um, I highly, highly suggest that you check out Aluna Ash if you have not already. I know a lot of us already have, um, but for those of you who have not actually done it yet, I really encourage you to do so. If you are not familiar with her, I encourage you to become acquainted because she is bringing forward so much beneficial information. She's literally telling us exactly what's happening with this ascension process. And she is most likely going to identify certain things for you that you've been experiencing that you may not have necessarily understood why you were experiencing them. Um, Aluna Ash, A-L-U-N-A. A-S-H, two words, okay? Um, that's the name of her YouTube channel. Um, what's recently been going on are solar flares hitting the earth. Um, and this is, uh, the way I see it, this is giving us the energy to move through this ascension process. It is facilitating this change from a carbon-based body and reality to a crystalline-based body. Uh, bodies and realities. Um, and I know that we did have, apparently, according to Aluna, we had a double flare hit us this past week. And I know for a fact that I was feeling that energy. It was on Tuesday. I was in class because I'm in school for music production and all that. Um, <clears throat> I was in class and, you know, we were doing a lecture all day and I was super engaged and, you know, energetic and ready to go and was paying attention. And then we took a break and then we came back in and somewhere between like 12 and 1 in the afternoon, I got hit with this intense wave that knocked me out. Like I was literally sitting at my desk listening and all of a sudden I felt like I was just going to fall dead asleep in the middle of class. And it was such a struggle to continue to, you know, pay attention. Um, I was getting irritable at that point, you know, I was just frustrated and tired and all I wanted to do was just lay down and go to sleep. And so I went to work right after and I got there early and I was able to like sleep on the, take a nap on the bench <laughs> for like an hour. And it turned out to be the best thing possible because as soon as I came out of that nap, 
I got to started with working and I felt so much better. So, um, um, fatigue, being tired is one of those symptoms. If you were feeling that, um, tingling, I know on Tuesday, my right hand was tingling, like right in the web between my pinky and ring finger. It was tingling at one point it like my arm started to tingle a little bit. Um, you may be feeling heart palpitations because the heart chakra is opening. Um, we are connecting with Pleiadian energy, which is of the fifth dimension. And so there are heart chakra act activations going on right now. So you may be experiencing heart palpitations at night or in the morning. Um, this is all information that I've been getting from Aluna and it's been, it's being confirmed. Now I already went through a major, um, heart activation years ago. Um, and I was experiencing heart palpitations and I was getting scared because I was like, holy shit, like what do I need to go to the hospital right now? Like what's going on? Um, but that's not the case. Just understand that, you know, it, it could be it's most likely ascension symptoms. Now, if you do have heart conditions that, you know, you've been working on and you feel like you want to go to the doctor and get that checked out by all means, please do that. Follow your intuition there. Um, other symptoms with like the third eye opening could be, uh, popping in like somewhere in your head. I know when I was going through my major third eye activation, there were moments where I would just hear this big, or hear and feel actually this big pop in my head. And it was almost like a blood vessel had burst. Um, and it was quite scary. Um, again, that is your heart chakra, uh, not your heart, your, your third eye chakra opening, your pineal gland decalcifying. Um, you, if you want to facilitate further decalcif decalcification of your pineal gland, Avoid fluoride, um, which is found in tap water. Um, it's also found in many toothpastes. It's kind of everywhere. Um, but fluoride does help to calcify the pineal gland, which will shut down its function. Other symptoms, especially of these uh, solar flares that we're dealing with, ringing in the ears. Um, and and if, if ringing in your ears is common for you, like it is for me, um, the distinction would be a super, super high pitch, higher than normal. I know I have experienced that a few times recently during these waves of flares. Again, this is mostly information that I'm getting from Aluna, who is, she's just really confirming a lot of things for me personally. So this is why I am recommending that you all check her out. Even if you're not necessarily experiencing some of these things, chances are you may just not be aware of it at the time. Um, but even still, if you're really not experiencing them, it would be a good idea to check her out because she is explaining to us a lot of what's happening with this ascension process. We are currently in the process of moving from the third dimension into the fourth dimension, which according to Aluna, we will be anchored there by 2025. And then um, from there, we'll be moving into the fifth dimension, which is our ultimate destination on this planet. Yeah, that's going to be sometime within 2030 something. Um, yeah. Let's see, what else do I want? But the, 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 the flares um, is something that I really wanted to bring forward because I feel like a lot of us are really experiencing that right now and are consciously aware of it. So I just wanted to help confirm some of that for you. Um, for Twins in Separation, the name of the game is still balance. Balance, balance, balance. Balancing masculine with feminine. Finding that union within. Finding the divine masculine within if you identify as the divine feminine. Finding the divine feminine within if you identify as the divine masculine. This is, this is the major way, the, mo the, the biggest way that union on the external is going to be facilitated. And there, to be quite honest, um, Outside of external reality between masculine and feminine or male and female, there are a lot of discrepancies that need to be healed within between your masculine and feminine energy. Um, I have come to a point of really finding a new sense of balance within, a new sense of union within, which feels great, feels really, really great. But while I was doing that, I really became aware of how I was personally perpetuating a lot of what we experience on the external world. Number one, because your external world is a reflection of your internal world, but also um, because I had these these stories. Now, I do, I do identify as gay, so I am a, uh, uh, and I am, I, I do identify as a feminine energy. So as I was growing up, um, having to basically be forced to fit into the masculine point of view, because physically I am male, was a struggle was a huge struggle for me. And at the same time, when I, I, as I, even as a kid, I identified more with feminine nature. 
it was even more of a struggle because physically I'm, I'm male. So, you know, people around me were like, well, that's weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, they weren't really upset, accepting of it, but it wasn't until I reached this twin flame journey that, I mean, we were, if you're really, if you're truly a twin, you're always on this path yeah, you, since the day you were born. Um, but it wasn't until I became consciously aware of the journey and I started really taking the steps that I, that we all have been guided to take was that was when I started to understand the dynamic within that was being perpetuated without or externally. Um, yeah. So the name of the game is balance guys. Um, you, you really need to heal the trauma and the pain and the damage, the wounding, um, that is within before you can really start to experience a change in your external. I said it there again for the third time, but I guess I'm saying it over and over because people need to hear the message. Yeah. So I believe that's it. Um, give me just a second. I do want to light some sage here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at my big ass smudge stick. Yeah, I love sage, guys. It is one of my favorite incenses. It's actually the only thing I really use, um, but that's just a personal preference. I really love it. I just love the way it smells. I love the feeling that it gives, and I'm sure my roommates <laughs> might be getting a little tired, sorry guys, of smelling sage all the time, but honestly, it's beneficial. It really helps. So there's that. So if you see smoke, don't worry, and I just got ashes all over myself, but don't worry, it's not in the, <laughs> my apartment's not burning down, I'm just burning some sage, yeah? Okay, so let's get into this mirror reading. I am continuing with the mirror reading. Now, if you're new to the channel, um, if you go back to previous videos, you will see that I have changed my setup for the Twin Flame um, videos, and I am doing two separate videos, one for twins and separation, and those of us that are in uh, union or have, feel that union is imminent um, or are in beneficial uh, uh, communication. I did resolve to just do a mirror reading for both because of the need for balance. And the mirror reading that I've been doing is really good at showing the, you know, how masculine and feminine energy are mirroring each other, are experiencing the same things, but differently because that's ultimately what's going to happen. Um, yes, so I'm doing a mirror reading. It consists of two decks, and then I'm going to be doing a relationship spread at the end from the Animal Spirit deck, yeah? Okay, so let's get into this, guys. So I have the two decks here. The deck on the left is going to symbolize the masculine energy. This is the Tarot Apocalypsis deck. And then on the right, we have the representation of the feminine energy, which is the Book of Shadows deck, specifically the So Below deck. It is split into two different decks, As Above, So Below. It's a whole thing. I'm really trying to learn to work with As Above because it is based off of traditional tarot. However, it is, um, it is uh, depicted a bit differently through um, pagan and witchcraft practices, yes? So I will be using the So Below deck, which is more closely related to the Tarot. That way we can see what kind of mirroring is happening for the twins at this moment. So I would encourage everyone to settle in. Take a deep breath with me. Please understand that time is an illusion. Space is also an illusion. So even though you are watching this video after I have recorded it and uploaded it and posted it, we are still connecting at this moment, yes? One more breath. All right, spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this moment, specifically those twins who are in separation. Please bring forward the best messages for the twin flames in separation at this time. Please give us a clear representation of the divine masculine energy represented by the deck on the left and the divine feminine energy represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how these energies are interacting or interacting with or mirroring each other. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, I'm going to start by shuffling the Divine Masculine deck. So give me just a few moments while I get this together. Divine Masculine. Oh, also, 
I do just want to put it, put it, throw this out there. If you are in the New York City metro area, I am doing readings at Om Shanti Bookstore. It is on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. The uh, link to the website for the bookshop is can be found in the description box below. I am there every Monday from 11 to 5, so if you would like to come see me in person, I highly recommend you do so. Yeah, let's come chat and have a party. All right, so this deck, we've got the Divine Masculine set. Now I'm going to shuffle the Divine Feminine. Okay, well, here's the deal. This card wanted to come out. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there. We've got the Two of Cups, guys. So there are many of you, Divine Feminines, that are questioning. And this is especially for those of you who are new to the journey. Again, welcome. This, this feels like a nightmare right now. I know it feels like a nightmare, but it's probably the best thing for you. Well, it probably, it is the best thing for you right now. 1555 on the counter. Change is coming, okay? And that change is in the form of union, between masculine and feminine energy within yourself. So we here we have the two of cups, which is talking about, yes, this is your divine counterpart. This is a soulmate, deep, deep, deep soulmate relationship. Um, but this is also about the necessity to balance masculine and feminine energy within. I'm also being guided to look at this card. Aha, and we have justice in reverse. And so justice in reverse uh, actually came up for twins in union, imminent union and communication last week. Um, but for for right now, what we're talking about is th there needs to be this balance. Let me see if I can do this so you guys can see it. There needs to be this balance between masculine and feminine energy. And there is in, uh, currently an injustice because of this imbalance. Yeah. I know this. I already feel the resistance. I know this is a hard thing to understand, to come to terms with. Um, but we need to stop blaming everything outside of ourselves for what we experience because ultimately it come it all comes from within yeah all right so divine uh shuffling for divine feminine <clears throat> divine feminine. all right one more shuffle and then i'll cut the deck and then we're going to start with the divine feminine's energy yes yes Okay, let's cut the deck here. All right, Divine Feminine, starting with you, your overall energy. We are starting with the Chariot. Excellent. So this, for the most part, for the, for, on behalf of the collective, Divine Feminine, you are really moving forward. You are moving forward with what you find to be your calling, what you find to be passionate, what, 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 gives you a sense of passion, of passion. Also, what gives you more specifically, excuse me, what gives you a sense of direction. Now, for those of you who are new to the journey, ultimately what your focus needs to be other than, well, this is in conjunction with balance, finding balance within yourself. You need to start doing the things that you are called to to do, the things that you find yourself really wanting to do, ways that you can be of service to others. I really see, now in this depiction, we have a woman driving people forward. And that's, uh, to be quite honest, that's how I see myself a lot of the time. When I'm dealing with people often, or when I'm interacting with people on a mental level, often I will see myself driving a car as we are having some sort of conversation or moving through some sort of conflict. Now, twin flames, if true, true twin flames are leaders, okay? We are leaders in ascension. We are leaders in the, uh, the anchoring of unconditional love. And it is through this journey that we walk personally and all these crazy experiences that we go through that we are able to learn about what unconditional love really is. And from that point forward, we can help others come to terms with it. Yeah. So we've got the chariot to start, which is excellent, and it's upright. So that's a very good thing. We have the six of wands in reverse. We also have the ten of cups in reverse. And we have the knight of wands. Okay. I always, I I've recently have started to see the knight of wands as a spiritual warrior. The one that rides in 
with a fury, with all kinds of fire behind them. But that fire also can be, because the wand suit can talk about spirituality. So that's where I get the, you know, the, the spiritual warrior aspect of the Knight of Wands. And we have that underneath everything here. So underlying all of what's be going, what you're going through right now, Divine Feminine, um, underlying this, you know, this overall energy that we have, the overall, overall energy, we have the Knight of Wands. So this is you stepping into your spiritual warrior power. Now, with the Six of Wands in reverse, and also the Ten of Cups in reverse, but I'll get to that in a second. With the Six of Wands in reverse, many of you are coming to terms with a lot of things that are um, not so victorious. You're really starting to understand, especially with the Chariot here, you're really starting to understand um, where things have kind of gone wrong or where you may have been going in the wrong direction. And I'm picking up that a lot of that is coming from conditioning. If you are new to the channel or if you have not watched my uh, Divine Conversation video about releasing conformity, I would highly recommend you do so because if you are resonating with the message in this way, then that video will have some very decent or if really good, if not decent messages for you. The Six of Wands in reverse is also connected with the Ten of Cups in reverse. So again, we're, you're really coming to terms with what is really not fulfilling you and how you may have gotten there. The, the direction you have gone in that has led you to this breakdown, this um, situation that's just crumbling around you and you don't necessarily understand why. Well, now you're in a position where you're understanding why and you're really coming to terms with your spiritual nature, with your with the spiritual warrior within. And that is driving you towards this chariot energy, which is going to propel you forward on your path towards um, greater fulfillment um, and greater uh, authentic expression. I'm also picking up... Um, uh, with the Six of Wands in reverse and the Ten of Cups in reverse. If there are some of you Divine Feminines who are still in a marriage, um, you're not happy about it uh, for whatever reason that is specific to your certain situation. I am picking up that for the most part, this is because you have become spiritual, you have become aware of this spiritual reality and you're starting to, and you're becoming aware of the fact that this marriage or it could just be a long-term relationship it doesn't have to necessarily be a marriage but i am picking up marriage energy because if you see here in the ten of cups these two are it's depicted as a wedding right so um it could be a marriage it could also just be a long-term committed relationship but you're kind of putting on the brave face you're kind of putting on the face of oh well, no everything's fine everything's great we're victorious we're so we're overcoming these obstacles we're climbing this mountain we're really deep down inside you're like this shit sucks I don't want to be here anymore, but this is good. Ultimately, this is very good for you because you are becoming aware of how unsatisfied you are, how unfulfilled you are, and you're you're already, you've been cultivating this Knight of Wands energy, and now you're at a point, you're at a tipping point where the Chariot energy is kicking in, and now you're starting to get the motivation to propel yourself forward towards greater fulfillment and authentic expression, Yeah. So let's get into the storyline for you, Divine Feminine. We're starting off with ah the Three of Challenges, which is the Three of Cups, coupled with the Six of Pentacles. Excellent. So some of you are really becoming aware of um, balance within your relationships. Now, neither of these are reversed, so this is a good thing. This is To me, this is really a positive awareness. This is not such a huge red flag in the sense that you're really starting to pick up imbalances or maybe even injustices in your relationships. Um, this is more of a subtle awareness that you're coming to. There could be some situation in your lives where you are celebrating with friends. Um, birthdays, I'm picking up on. Um, milestone achievements, spiritual, spiritual achievements. If you're part of a spiritual community, um, you could be celebrating some sort of new level that you have reached or someone else has reached around you. Um, but this is also, Divine Feminine, this is also a desire to want to be able to give to the community. And this is where the Knight of Wands or the spiritual warrior energy is also manifesting in your life. And the Chariot, um, you're being propelled towards a situation in which you can give back, be of service to the people around you, to, to the community. And that is ultimately a major part of the Twin Flame journey. So again, this is a message for those of you who are pretty new to the, to the journey. Again, welcome. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm very glad you have found this awareness. It may suck sometimes, but ultimately it's for your highest good and for the highest good of those you are connected with. Yeah. Um, but yes, being of service. And so many of you may find that you may start doing readings. You may start, you may create a channel. That's what I did. Um, once I really started to get into the, uh, you know, the spiritual path, the, the being of service to people, um, one part of that was going back to school so that I can master um, music production, which is something that I've already taught myself to do and, and have gotten pretty good at it. But I decided to go back to school to really de redefine my mastery in that. But then also I was guided to start doing readings for people which were wildly successful and then I started this channel, okay? So you could be experiencing a lot of that energy, that push to propel yourself in this direction, okay? Moving forward, we have the Five of Cups in reverse. This is good. I like seeing the Five of Cups in reverse, especially on this Twin Flame journey. And we have the Eight of Cups in reverse. Okay, so there. this is kind of, this is a little bit of a conflicting message, but again, ultimately it's good because we have this overall energy of the Knight of Wands and the uh, Chariot propelling you forward. To a certain extent, um, some of you may be in a, so, a sort of mournful energy, which is depicted by the Five of Cups here, but it is reversed. So, um, okay, I am picking up a few different things here. So if it, so it's reversed, so some of you may be uh, deciding or, choo or choosing or just in the process of moving away from um, feeling sorry for yourself, crying over spilled milk, which can come across a little derogatory sometimes, but sometimes it is the truth. Um, you know, just mourning over some sort of loss. And then coupled with the Eight of Cups in reverse, there could have been some struggle. So now if you are resonating with this message in the sense that you were really in, you feeling stuck in mournful energy, you know, just bemoaning all of the different changes, all the things you may need to be walking away from and, and keeping yourself stuck in the situation and not walking away from it, for you, you are removing yourself from both of these energies. You are not letting yourself cry over this anymore or feel over emotional over anymore. And you're not allowing those emotions to keep you stuck in this situation that you know you need to walk away from. On the other hand, there are some of you that are still in this energy and this is coming up as reversed because you are feeling stuck in the energy. And, and I'm, get, I'm getting, for the most part, if you are feeling stuck in this energy, it is because you are not allowing yourself to move forward. The good thing is you have the chariot energy around you. So if you're still stuck, you feel like you can't move out of it, keep um, continuing to connect with your spiritual warrior within, with your spiritual passion, with, you, with your driving force, with what you're passionate about. And that will help you move away from whatever this is. And I am picking up that this is connected to um, the Six of Wands and the Ten of Cups in reverse, some sort of relationship. It could be a, car well, most likely it is a karmic relationship, but it could also be a soulmate relationship. Karmic relationships are more dealing with your shadow aspects, while uh, uh, soulmate relationships deal with healing aspects of like your chakra systems and something that's not so dark. Now, especially if this is a soulmate, a deep soulmate relationship, there could be some of you that are bemoaning the fact that you have to leave this behind. And I know how much of a struggle that is. I mean, I recently came out of a marriage and we, he and I had a very deep soulmate connection and it was very difficult for me to actually get to the point where I was like, no, it is actually a disservice for me to stay in this relationship, both for myself and for you, um, you know, my husband at the time. So it, I understand where you guys are coming from with this. And I'm not trying to rush you. Please don't think I'm trying to rush you. The energy of moving forward, I'm hearing of propelling yourself forward is around you. It is integrating within you. So it will get easier. It's not, it, it, it won't get easier emotionally. Well, it will get easier, easier emotionally, but still, you know, you just, you just got to, push through and go for what it is your your heart is calling you to move towards. Yes. Moving forward, we have the Queen of Swords in reverse with the Star in reverse. Okay, so I do feel like some of the divine feminines here. Now this is mostly for those of you who are new to the journey. 
um, you're kind of adopting a Queen of Swords in reverse energy. Now, this is not necessarily towards anyone outwardly, although it could manifest in that way because you are experiencing this energy internally. But this is more towards the universe with the star in reverse because you are receiving guidance to, to move towards something and you don't necessarily like it. You don't quite understand why you need to be doing this. It's like your life is being uprooted for no seemingly good reason. But see, the thing about the star is there's a lot of darkness around you and there's just this one small point of light that is beckoning towards you, that's pulling you towards it, that is guiding you in a certain direction. And you don't necessarily know why or how you're going to get there, when you're going to get there. It's just pulling you forward. You just have to get through it. I would encourage you to, because the, I would encourage you to really keep um, neg negatively aspected Queen of Swords energy at bay as much as possible. Queen of Swords in reverse um, she's not nice. Uh, she is very cutting. She's very judgmental. She can be mentally manipulative. Um, and she just kind of hacks and slashes at people, um, really with no good reason, mainly just because she wants to. Now, in this situation, I'm not picking up that you're being, in, that whoever is resonating with this part of the message is actively trying to be in this energy. This is mainly because of the circumstances that you find yourself in and the direction you know you're being pulled in. But understand that even if you don't necessarily see why or understand why you're being pulled in this direction, why you have to take certain steps like leave certain people behind, ultimately it is for your highest good and it's for their highest good, whoever else you're involved with. And that will leave you open and leave you with space to really fill it, fill your life with things that are fulfilling and things that you are meant to be doing here on your path, okay? Finally, for the Divine Feminine, we have the Seven of Cups in reverse with the Two of Wands in reverse. There is some sort of, there is some sort of stagnation, okay? Um, and what I'm picking up here, again, this is mostly for twins that are in the, um, beginning stages of this journey, if you're fairly new to the journey. Um, but also this is a little bit for some of us that are pretty seasoned on the journey. And this is actually a message that came through, a similar message that came through with these um, twins in union, imminent union and communication last week. The Seven of Cups in reverse is talking, about, well, the Seven of Cups talks about wishful thinking, can also talk about um, many different options. Here it's reversed, um, and what I'm picking up on is that many of you Divine Feminines are caught, are feeling stuck in this wishful thinking, multiple options point of view. And with the Two of Wands in reverse, what I'm also picking up is there is a refusal to make some sort of decision. Even though you know that many, if not all, of the different options around you are illusionary, part of you, and I'm getting that this is mostly your ego, is saying, well, no, I'm not going to, no, I'm going to, I'm going to ex explore all of these options, whatever, I know what you're telling me, I know that there, there's one option here that I need to choose from, but I don't want to do that right now, okay? So the Two of Wands is saying that you're literally, in some cases, you're refusing to make a, 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 a a decision on what you know is spiritually guided because these are wands here so this can talk about spirituality but it can also talk about passion so if you know that you're really passionate about something but you have all these other options around you that could potentially potentially give you what you're looking for you're choosing not to choose the one option that you know is best for you is right for you or you're choosing to just keep swimming around in all this wishful thinking and all these other options now for some of you it's not so much of a conscious decision to not make a decision, to not choose. You are feeling stuck. You have, you do in fact have all these options, but not necessarily, you don't necessarily have the clarity to say, okay, no, I do know which direction I'm going to go into and I'm going to follow that path. Ultimately, what will help you is to continue to connect with this Knight of Swords, not, I'm sorry, Knight of Wands energy, this spiritual warrior within. Um, I would highly recommend uh, meditation to help bring deeper clarity and more communication with your higher self. And that will really help you make this decision, come out of this illusionary aspect and move forward on your path. Okay, so that was for the Divine Feminine. We are gonna get into the Divine Masculine now. We have the 10 of Wands starting off 
re in reverse for their overall energy with the Four of Cups and the Queen of Wands. We also have Death as the overall underneath everything card, okay? So Death obviously is talking about a transformation. Now, Death is upright, and that's a good thing here for me um, in how I see it. Um, we have the Ten of Wands in reverse, okay? For some Divine Masculines, you are having trouble letting go of um, burdens. But that is just for a slim amount of you. For the most part, Divine Masculine, what I'm picking up on, those of you that I'm connecting with right now, you are literally in the process of cutting all of these cords. You see how all, you see all those ropes that man is tied to as he pulls this period pyramid, this, this just seemingly impossible task? Well, you are in the process of cutting all those cords now, and that is confirmed with death, which is upright. So many of the Divine Masculines may have been in a situation where they were refusing death. Death was coming up quite a bit um, in, the, in recently, at least for the readings that I've been doing, but it has been in reverse. So there has been resistance towards this transformation, and that's not happening anymore. We have the Four of Cups here, and this is talking about, um, yes, I just heard unrequited love. Um, yes, it can talk about that, but it also mainly talks about taking something for granted. Something is being handed to you, and you don't want to accept it. That has been the energy recently. Uh, for a long time, there have been many divine feminines that have been, inc myself included, that have been moving forward and, you know, making an offer to our divine masculines, but they were just kind of rejecting it. Um, here, what I'm picking up, especially in conjunction with the Ten of Wands in reverse and death, you are no longer accepting um, any sort of interaction or or in the process of of rejecting any sort of um, offers from others that are not your divine counterpart or some sort of um, karmic relationship that you've been in. We also have the Queen of Wands here. And to me, the Queen of Wands um, is a depiction of the divine feminine from a uh, ma minor arcana, we'll say mundane, for lack of a better term, point of view. The 3D, the physical reality. The Divine Feminine is depicted as the Empress in the Major Arcana, which talks about the spiritual aspects of our lives. The counterpart to the Queen of Wands, obviously, is the King of Wands. So what I'm picking up here is there is a big transformation happening for divine Ma for you, Divine Masculine, right now. You are releasing the burdens that you have been carrying for so long. Um, you are rejecting offers from karmic partners in favor of um, offers or actually wanting to send an offer to your Divine Feminine. Now, there is some fear for some Divine Masculines that you will now be subject to the same Four of Cups energy that you have subject your Divine Feminine to. <laughs> that is entirely possible, guys. I'm not going to say it's not. Um, but what I am going to say to you, Divine Masculine, is don't, don't focus on that. And if that does happen, I mean, it's kind of par for the course. If that does happen to you, then there is an, there you need to experience that energy. I'm not going to say all is lost. Ultimately, you know, we are divine counterparts. We are divine partners. Um, this is a spiritually guided, divinely guided relationship. So ultimately, you two most likely will come into get come into union eventually. You you know, but if you do experience that, then this is kind of a lesson that you need to go through. You need to experience what you put your divine feminine through. I mean, that's kind of point blank here. <laughs> um, yeah, let's move on. Uh, Storyline here, we're starting with the Nine of Swords in reverse. Excellent, excellent. With the Five of Pentacles. Okay, so look, check it out. Um, some of you Divine Masculines, you have been in a state of lack. You have been... Um, you know, you've been worried about whether things are going to work out for you, whether or not your Divine Feminine is going to accept you back. Um, you, in some cases, this is the same type of energy that you have projected towards your Divine Feminine in that not accepting their offer for whatever reason. Now, it could be perfectly valid. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to devalue, to, to invalidate your decision there. But 
this is also a message of you needing to experience this being left out on the cold situation. And for the most part, a lot of you have already been experiencing that. If you are new to the journey, you may be experiencing that now. But ultimately, with the Nine of Swords in reverse, you're not having anxiety over it anymore. You're not having sleepless nights over it anymore because you are starting to understand what this lesson is to you. You're starting to understand what being left out in the cold feels like. And I'm not saying you haven't experienced that in the past, but now you're really starting to learn that lesson. And it's being facilitated by your divine feminine because you are becoming more fully aware of this connection between the two of you. And you're starting to see how your actions may have made your divine feminine feel. And so because we are twins, because we are mirrors to each other, we experience the same things just differently and not necessarily at the same time. Okay, moving forward, we have the Magician in reverse with ah, the Four of Wands in reverse. So yeah, there are still a lot of divine masculines, a lot of you divine masculines out there that are experiencing this feeling of being left out in the cold and um, not knowing if you will be able to really manifest this union with your divine feminine. The Four of Wands does talk about um, union. It is a union card when it comes to Twin Flames. It also talks about... Um, stability and, and, and good foundations in a certain situation. Um, some divine masculines, you are dealing with the realization of how your actions, which are depicted by the magician in reverse here, uh, heavily, heavily manipulative, manipulative in the sense of just get out to get what you want without any real concern about what others, how it affects others and it not being in alignment with the highest good of yourself and all involved, because that is that is a place where the magician really works from when they're positively aspected. They work with the laws and of the universe and the tools they have around them, yes, to manipulate, you know, manipulate existence to bring forward that which they desire, but it's grounded in the highest good for themselves and everyone else involved. But here, what you're coming to realize, Divine Masculine, is that you have not been acting from this place of integrity and it has caused problems with your foundation, not just with your Divine Feminine, but with your foundation as a whole, okay? Um, yeah, and you're, you're really working on correcting that. I mean, integrity is the name of the game here. Moving forward, we have Judgment in reverse with the Three of Cups in reverse. So here is our instance of, um, of mirroring, okay? We've got the Three of Cups here with the Divine Feminine. We've got the Three of Cups here with the Divine Masculine. And um, this is, honestly, guys, this is Divine Masculine. You're really going through your, <laughs> excuse me, this moment of death, um, and you're not fighting it anymore. There really is no way that you can fight it anymore. Judgment in reverse and the Three of Cups in reverse is talking about you refusing to hear this call that you have been, or I'm sorry, you're refusing your refusal to listen to and act upon this calling that you've been hearing for so long, okay? Instead, you have been choosing to stay within this negatively aspected Three of Cups energy. This could be a third party situation in the sense of another uh, romantic partner. It could also be family members. Um, it could be friendships. And what I'm really picking up here is you giving in to social pressures uh, to remain in the place that the state that you were in instead of listening to your higher self and the callings of the universe to ascend and trans transcend these lower vibrational energies and move into a higher sense of awareness. Okay. Finally, for the divine masculine, we have the king of wands. So we've got the counterparts here in your spread, Divine Masculine, excellent, with the King of Pentacles. I like to see that. So, Divine Masculine, you're really starting to step into your power, okay? And you're grounded in this power with the King of Pentacles. Now, like I was saying before, the Queen of Wands is the depiction of the Divine Feminine in the... Um, minor arcana. The King of Wands is the depiction of the Divine Masculine in the Minor Arcana. So, uh, Divine Masculine, you are stepping into your power here. You are grounding, you're stepping into your spiritual power. You're also stepping into your um, physical power. Now, the three, the, the physical realm is the domain of masculine energy. 
whereas the spiritual realm is the, domain, the, the domain of the feminine energy. And so this spiritual aspect, this spiritual nature to yourself is really starting to be grounded and rooted in integrity in your physical life. And because of that, you are now able to recognize who your divine feminine is and you are, you are working towards releasing the burdens that you have been carrying that have been keeping you from your divine feminine, okay? Wow, that's a really beautiful message. And I, and to be honest, I love the way that is ending, especially in relation to death upright. Death is not reversed here, guys. It is upright. This is fantastic, okay? This, I just, I, woo, I could not be happier right now to see these messages coming forward for, for all of us, really. Now, you could be um, in... Beneficial union, uh, not beneficial union, um, communication with your twin, but still separate. You know what I mean? You don't have to be, um, uh, you don't have to be in zero communication to still be in separation. All right. So I would encourage you guys, um, if you feel, if you are in communication, I encourage you to continue watching both videos because I really feel like there are some very good messages that could come forward for, for you in both videos. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to get into the relationship spread from the animal spirit deck. I'm just going to shuffle it up three times. And then I'm going to free shuffle and allow the messages to come out on their own. All right, so uh, we're going to start. This is a four-card spread if you're new to this. The card on the left is going to symbolize the energies of the divine masculine in this moment. Uh, or for in relation to this reading. The card on the right is going to symbolize the energies of the divine feminine. On the bottom, we have the shadow dynamic of the relationship. And on the top, we have the, uh, the illuminated aspect of the relationship. So for the divine masculine, one card, please. There it is. We have rabbit. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. For the divine feminine, we have owl. All right. The... Okay, the shadow dynamic is starfish, and I'll hold these up in a second. And the illuminated aspect is fox. All right, guys. I am going to be reading from the book for this. Okay, to start, for the Divine Masculine, we have rabbit. Okay, now give me just a second here. I do have to find... It is a little difficult to find the, the, the cards. Ah, here we go. All right. Rabbit. Afraid of everything. Overwhelmed and frozen. The rabbit loves to remind his friends that someday the eagle will swoop down and eat him. He talks and talks and talks about it so loudly, in fact, that one day the eagle hears and thanks him for the great idea. Rabbit energy is alive when we are scared, most often about the future and we become our own worst enemy. We spin up a dust cloud of fear and then complain to others that we are lost. Notice your thoughts and words, O oh rabbit. They shape your destiny. When in balance, rabbit is sensitive, a problem solver, and a good listener. When out of balance, rabbit over explains and talks fast. To bring into balance, one must observe a day of silence. And this makes perfect sense, Divine Masculine. You're really not only have you been going through this moment of death and transformation for the longest time, you've also been in resistance to it. But now, with the energies that are coming through here and the messages that are coming through right now, you're not in resistance to this anymore. You're actually following through with it, um, no matter what that may look like in your external reality. And that makes perfect sense why you would feel this energy of fear. But also understand that, you know, the more you focus on what you fear, the more it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, okay? Now, you do have the Nine of Swords in reverse here. The Nine of Swords can talk about self-fulfilling prophecies. So you are moving out of this energy. This is just a cautionary tale to say, now just, just relax. Just be, you know, don't talk so much. Don't think so much. Don't, don't you know, work on getting out of your head about this and really work on, on focusing and focusing on what it is you truly desire and balancing yourself, okay? You, there really isn't, you don't have to fear everything, okay? Even the unknown. I know the unknown is scary. It is scary because it's the unknown, okay? But if you keep your vibration at the right level, the unknown actually will benefit you rather than work against you, okay? 
For the Divine Feminine, we have Owl. This is such a beautiful card. Okay, Owl, 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 Owl. Just a moment here. Owl. Abundance, clairvoyant, and treasures. The owl is a mysterious and otherworldly creature found in folklore from east to west. The white owl in this particular deck is the companion of the goddess Lakshmi and represents wealth, beauty, and good fortune. When the owl card appears, it's an omen that a boon or treasure is on the way, either in spiritual or material form. With owl wisdom on your side, you'll, quote, see and, quote, know exactly what to do with this boon how it can further serve your dharma and bring abundance to the world. Trust that the wellspring of treasure is infinite. When in balance, owl is generous, trusting, and secure. When out of balance, uh, owl experiences money quarrels and scarcity. To bring into balance, one must give an offering. Now, Divine Feminine, this is talk speaking directly to those of you who are fearing, who are... Um, upset about the fact that you have to make these changes. And this is exactly what I was saying in when we were talking about things in your spread. What you don't understand at the moment, now owl can all, an owl can also symbolize illusions, okay? Um, but keep in mind that what you don't understand is, or what you may not necessarily understand at the moment, what you may be refusing to understand at the moment is that where you are guided, what you are being guided to do, the steps you are being guided to take are ultimately for your highest good and for the highest good of those around you. So with like when I was talking about the star in reverse, you have this one bit of light that is shining towards you and is leading you somewhere, but you don't know where you're going and you can't see anything else around you. So you don't really know what you're getting into. So yes, that can lead to fear, trepidation, um, unwillingness to trust, but you need to just trust because ultimately the universe is trying to hand you exactly what you've been looking for all along, okay? The shadow dynamic is starfish. Beautiful, alluring, superficial, or shallow. The starfish is a natural and exquisite beauty, mesmerizing to all. Being around someone with starfish energy is a thrill, like you've been put under a spell of divinity itself. The problem is, these creatures have been reliant on how they look and what other people think of them for so long that they may have forgotten their deeper callings. When this card appears, it's important to ask, am I being swayed by outward appearances? What dreams have I put aside to please others? When in balance, starfish is uplifting, artistic, and expressive. When out of balance, starfish gossips, feels empty. To bring into balance, one must surround themselves with positive friends. Now, I mean, this is obviously speaking to both, but I'm going to start with the Divine Masculine first. Divine Masculine, you have come into the awareness of um, how you've just been of service to people that really are just taking advantage of you. That's what is symbolized by these burdens here in the Ten of Wands. But you are releasing this because you're starting to understand the superficiality of the reality you find yourself in right now, okay? And you don't want that anymore. You want a deeper meaning. For the Divine Feminine, it's the same thing, only, you know, there is more trepidation that I'm hearing. Um, and this is for a lot of you. I'm really, I really feel like I'm really speaking to Divine Feminines who are just entering consciously entering the um, the journey. For those divine masculines that I'm connected with and speaking to, you have been on this journey for some time. And divine feminine, those of you that are um, that are new to the journey, your divine masculines probably have even less of an idea about the journey than you do. And so they're not, not, not necessarily watching right now. But for those divine masculines that are watching right now, you have been on the journey for some time. And you are, you are starting to become aware of it. This is why you're watching. So this is why there is this bit of discrepancy between, you know, I'm speaking to divine feminines that are just entering, but the divine masculines are, you know, have been, on, been aware of this journey for some time. Now, these messages also could be for those divine masculines whose feminines are just now becoming aware of the journey too. Don't get me wrong. This, you know, energy is fluid. It flows all different ways. And this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't, you know, but yeah, 
there's that. Okay, the illuminated aspect, we have Fox. Oops, this way. Fox, Fox, Fox. There we are. This is the illuminated aspect of the relationship. Smart, strong partner or mate, wise teacher. The fox is an enchanting creature with plenty of mystique to go around. The fox personalities are skillful in business and also make great teachers. They are quick to learn and adapt well to new situations. Foxes are ideal life partners as they commit to relationships for the long term and their natural charisma keeps things exciting. Fox energy helps us stay true to those most dear to us. When this card appears, reconnect to those you love. Foxes don't do well when they slip away. When in balance, Fox is magical, ingenious, an ingenious teacher, and monogamous. When out of balance, Fox is sneaky and unsure of their identity. To bring into balance, one must practice partnership and connection. All right, so check it out, guys. This is speaking directly to the leadership aspect of this twin flame journey, okay? Um, and when we're positively aspected, we absolutely are monogamous. We absolutely are leaders. We are powerful. We are strong. We are charismatic. You know, gra people gravitate toward us. People want to be around us. Um, when we are negatively aspected, we are the exact opposite. And so this is absolutely speaking to some divine ma feminines, even some divine masculines that are kind of resisting letting go of some things. Um, you know, the, 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 the non, and I'm not trying to say that a polyamorous relationship is wrong. No, if that resonates with you, please follow your heart. But I am speaking to those of us who embark on polyamorous relationships, if you even want to call it that, because, uh, that would, <laughs> that would actually kind of require that you be in some sort of agreed upon relationship. Right. But if you are just kind of like running around giving it up to anybody who wants some, I mean, that's not healthy. Um, it's not good for you. It's not good for them. It's an exchange of all kinds of nasty karma that's just going to come back and bite you in the ass in the end. And I'm, honestly, I'm not trying to come down on anybody. Do you live your life, but do it with integrity. Another thing that Fox in, uh, negatively aspected, even though it's not listed in the book, I'm feeling the energy of um, coming, acting from a place of less than integrity, we'll, we'll call it that. Um, and to be quite honest, Fox is fire. I believe it's fire, let me look, let me look again. But I believe that's fire. And as, a, as an illuminated aspect, it's kind of perfect. Yeah, Fox, hold on. No, Fox is earth. Yes, Fox is earth, okay, never mind. But I do see some fiery energy in Fox, mainly because Foxes are red in, in life. So I am picking up on some of that. So it's kind of a really good, you know, a good indicator of illuminating exactly who we are in this world. All right, guys. So there was the reading. I hope this resonated with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I am available for private readings. You can find all of the information in the description box below. I will be at Om Shanti on Mondays, so please come check it out. If you like, I believe you can call and schedule a time to come see me. So that would be best. It just to make sure that you know you've got your time slot secure and we can you can for sure come in and see me in the event that you know I'm not necessarily available when you get there. Okay guys, I believe that's it. Much love to you all. Uh, and I really I look forward to connecting with you all again for our next conversation next week. Take care everybody. Bye.